Hello, and allow me please to welcome you to another episode of I'd Like to Know. My name is C.A. Murray, and it is our privilege and pleasure to join with you today as we study the Word of God and answer those questions that you have sent in to us. Uh, I'm flanked by two fellow travelers on the road to glory, fellow students of the Word. To my left is Pastor David Salazar. Pastor, always good to have you here uh, and to study the Word of God with you. Amen, Pastor. It's always a blessing to have you also here with us. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our founding president, Pastor Stephen Bohr. Pastor, as always, good to study the Word of God with you. All I can say is welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> we have been away for just a little while, uh, not on vacation, doing the work of the Lord, and God has been, been uh, blessing us, uh, and we thank Him for that. Gentlemen, again, it's always good to study the Word of God with both of you, as you are students of the Word. This is I'd Like to Know. It's a question and answer program. And if you want to be part of the questions and the answers, then we encourage you in the strongest possible terms to write us, to email us, to call us. Just get the questions in and we will answer them. You can email us at tv at sumtv.org. That is tv.sumtv.org. And we will get to those questions just as soon as we possibly can. The list is long and the line is is quite long, so we're answering them just as fast as we can. But this is what we found, gentlemen, that if, if we rush through the questions, then we don't really do diligence to those who take the time to write the questions in. So rather than speed, we're kind of leaning on the side of accuracy and thoroughness so that you feel that your questions are addressed seriously and that the answers come from the Word of God, which is the promise we make to you that always when your questions come in, if an answer can be brought to you from the Word of God, we will bring that answer to you. That promise we do make to you. So, Pastor Salazar, if you will pray for us, Absolutely. we will launch out and have a good time together. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are very delighted that we can come to you at this hour to ask your Holy Spirit to come into our midst, to our minds, to be able to uh, speak not according to your own, our own thoughts, our own words, but we want to speak truth, and we want you to uh, clear our minds so that we may respond to the questions with that said the Lord. I pray that you will be with us now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Now, according to you worthy gentlemen, I'm getting on board a train that is already on the tracks and already moving. Mm -hmm. uh, when last we were together, um, a question comes in from Kenya, uh, from Jude. And I think you had answered the first two of a four-part question. Correct. And we need now to address questions three and four. Um, he writes, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 7, there is an interjection of this part, a body thou hast prepared for me. I'm not getting the relationship of the phrase in relationship to the rest of the verse. So I guess he wants a little explanation, a little exegesis on a body thou hast prepared for me. So I want to turn to that very quickly because a couple of things occur to me. Um, if you read the whole, I guess you can call this an interjection. It's a, um, a little veering off uh, to something in particular, but it is very secret. It makes sense when you read the whole uh, mm -hmm. list of verses mm -hmm. five through seven because the, the overall theme is, is sacrifice. And of course, much of the book of Hebrews has to do with, with sacrifice, mm -hmm. with the fact that Christ is, I'll use the term, the real deal, mm -hmm. and you don't have to go to another. His sacrifice was complete, it was one time, and it was yeah. thorough. And, and this little interjection deals with that. When you look at burnt offerings and sacrifice of sin, God has no pleasure in that. So uh, something was arranged in heaven mm -hmm. so that the continual sacrificial system did not have to be carried out. One time, one sacrifice, and that's what this body being prepared is Amen. for, to, to complete that work and that understanding. Anything you gentlemen want to add? Yeah, I think when you connect uh, verse 4 with verse 5 and following, it becomes very clear, as mm -hmm. you were mentioning. Uh, speaking about the sacrificial system in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. it says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's, it's saying that the old system was good because it pointed forward to Christ, right. but it did not deal definitively with sin. Uh, what did deal definitively with sin? Well, that's in the next verses. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, 
sacrifice and offering you did not desire. In other words, all those sacrifices in the Old Testament, that's only functional. Uh, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. A body to offer a sacrifice, Precisely. the real sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then it says, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Uh, so, uh, and then it says in verse 8, previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that's the sacrificial system, mm -hmm. that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body. There's the body that was prepared for him, mm -hmm. the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Yeah. Three times in this little soliloquy, he says, I'm not into sacrifices. I don't want sacrifices. I don't desire sacrifices. So I had to prepare, heaven had to prepare, I use it that way, a, a, an entity, a being, to come down, assume a body, and make a sacrifice that was once and for all and made it done. Right. So he said it three times. I'm just not into sacrifices, but sin has to be dealt with, and there's only one person who could deal that, would no. deal with that, and that's Jesus. Because the, because the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. Cannot that's, do it. That initiates the sequence mm -hmm. of the argument. Exactly, exactly. Yes. I, I believe that it's important to notice that, you know, Christ shows <clears throat> also in this um, phrase He's actually speaking, and Paul is quoting uh, Psalms 40, verses yes. 6 through 8. And it shows the, 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 the expression of, of Jesus showing his pre-existence, you know, his experience that he's coming to the earth to do the will of the Father, to be able to receive the body, the physical human body, to be able to experience the sacrifice that he will make in expiation for sin. So the only answer to sin is not the sacrificial system that was only a shadow of Christ, but it was truly the, uh, the, you know, the experience that Christ wanted to replace with his own sacrifice. He wanted to make sure that, as you mentioned, you well mentioned, is his sacrifice is one and for all. You know, mm -hmm. there's one time Amen. done. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The truth be told, and I think you, you touched on this, uh, Pastor Gore, the, that bulls and goats couldn't really do anything. It would, those, those things were done in faith, uh, expecting the sacrifice of Christ. So it only had sense given the fact that Christ was going to come. Sure. So you, 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 you did an act that, that foreshadowed the grand act. And if, I, if the grand act was never done, those bulls and goats would do nothing. It's just right. sort of a waste of time. And also important, you know, that God does, did not delight in the sacrifices. It was not something that he found pleasure in necessarily that. It was a, a system to point to the need of an external savior for mankind. Mm -hmm. And this is really the, you know, the ultimate sacrifice of Christ coming as, a, as, as a, one of us to die for us and yeah. save us. Yeah. I think that word you just tossed in is, is very apropos, mm -hmm. an external savior. We don't have it in us to save ourselves. Yeah. Something has to happen outside of us. Right. And even the acts that we're doing just looks forward to that day when that outside actor will come in and save us from our sins. Pastor. Amen. Okay. Uh, one more from Brother Jude. Help me, he says in question four, differentiate between the old, everlasting, new, and second covenant. Hmm. All right. Um, how many covenants are there? Let me ask it that way. There's only one true covenant. There you go. The everlasting covenant. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yes. Yeah, there's only one. And that covenant was between the Father and the Son, mm -hmm. that if man should sin, uh, the Father would send Christ to uh, solve the problem of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the everlasting That's covenant. That's the everlasting covenant. And Ellen and White explains the reason why it's everlasting is because... Mm. It existed long before sin came into the universe. Yes. There was an agreement between the Father and the Son long before uh, anyone sinned. And it's going to last forever because it was really the result of his, that everlasting covenant, we are saved. Yeah. The, the, the truth is the sin experiment did not catch God by surprise. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had a mechanism to deal with it. Uh, and the problem with the covenant was not with the covenant itself, was the fact that mm -hmm. we broke it. Yes. You know, we, we were at fault. So in, in Jeremiah 31, 31, we all know this very, very well. Uh, I'm trying to scan down here. Behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel 
with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant which I made with, with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, um, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Uh, but this is the covenant that I will make uh, with the house of, house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. So the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant is the writing material and the material on which it was written. Same mm -hmm. covenant, mm -hmm. but instead of being just on a hard piece of stone, now it's put in the heart. So it's the place that it's written, not the language of the covenant itself. Yeah, in uh, the book of Hebrews, the emphasis in, in the book of Hebrews, uh, we find in the words good and better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Particularly the word better. The old system was not bad. It w the new system is better it's than the better. old system. Because yes. mm -hmm. the old system was still Christ-centered. The old system pointed forward to the Christ who was going to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a bad system. It was a good system in that it pointed to Christ. Mm -hmm. The new system is better because the new system actually um, materializes what was promised mm -hmm. before. Uh -huh. So the old covenant in the sense in the book of Hebrews is the covenant of the promise. All right. of the ceremonies and all the sacrifices that pointed forward to Christ. The new covenant is the fulfillment of what was predicted in the ceremonial system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the fulfillment in Christ. Yes. Uh, so, so basically there's an everlasting covenant which embraces all. Mm -hmm. Then there's the old covenant which is the sacrificial system. The new covenant in the sense that this is fulfilled in Christ. Yes. And the everlasting covenant will exist in the future as you were mentioning because the saved will review the plan of salvation throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's only one covenant. Only really. one covenant. <laughs> praise the Lord for, praise that. for that. I think we need to remember the context in which Hebrews was written. It was written to Hebrew Christians who were thinking about, considering about, considering rather, going back into Judaism. They were mm -hmm. thinking about returning. And so Hebrews was written to let them know that going back is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus has done it once and for all, and he is complete, and you are complete in him. So that, that sort of ties in nicely with what you were saying, because it's all about Christ. Stay in Christ. You don't, you don't win anything going back uh, into the old system. Mm -hmm. Your future is Jesus, Amen. and you've got to stay in, in Jesus. Amen. Yeah, if anybody wants to pursue this further, uh, I would recommend that they read Hebrews chapter 7 and chapter 8, yes. where the idea of the two covenants is developed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that if you study those two chapters, you should be able to, to explain, uh, you know, what the old and the new and the eternal is. Uh, if I could just read one verse, uh, verse 13 uh -huh. of chapter 8, it says, In that he says, a new covenant... He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus came, all of the prescriptions of the old covenant were made obsolete mm -hmm. because that which they pointed to was the fulfillment. Was the fulfillment, yeah. yeah. That, that is why in verse 9, chapter 10, verse 9, we, which we actually used to answer the question before, uh, it says that because of Christ, he takes away the first and he established the second. Right. So the second is that second covenant, but it's really, um, as you mentioned, Pastor Bohr, you know, is on better, is a better, you know, promises, is a better uh, than the one that was not necessarily bad, it was just not as good as the second one because Christ simplifies that one. And you know, you have Matthew 26, 28, where Jesus is instituting the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. and he says, this is the blood of the new covenant, covenant. Mm -hmm. which is shed for you. Mm -hmm. Well. If there's a new covenant, there's an old one. What is the old one? The blood of animals. The, animals, correct. the new covenant is the blood of Christ. That's and correct. one of the themes of the book of Hebrews is better blood. Absolutely. Yes. The better Old blood. Testament blood was good, yeah. but the blood of Jesus is better. Is better. Amen. <laughs> Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. You know, I, I knew you were going to hit, uh, I have three texts from Matthew chapter 8, uh, and 8.13 I think sort of puts a pin in it mm -hmm. and really, really pegs it really, really, really well. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting study. It is one that will affirm you and certainly affirm your love for Christ and the sacrifice of Christ as being central uh, to the whole covenant theme and theology. So praise the Lord for, for that. Amen. 
All right, is, the, is Sandra the next one, or are we going to go back to this long one? I um, think it's Sandra. It's Sandra? Okay, we'll go to, to Sandra. We don't have a location. Uh, again, we encourage you, if you, if you can, if, if it does not stress you too much, let us know when you're writing from, because it just lets us know what the footprint of the ministry is and um, where uh, we are touching lives and, and doing what we can for the cause of Christ. So, Sandra, thank you for writing. Question, I have a question regarding... Uh, what the Bible says about vegetarianism. Does the Bible say that we must be vegetarians uh, in preparing for the second coming of Christ? Hmm. Well, this is an interesting question, and uh, I can say that the Bible does not necessarily dictate that somebody needs to be vegetarian to be saved. You know, there is not such a, that said the Lord, you have to be vegetarian. Uh, but God has given us very clear evidence in the Bible as far as that he is interested in our physical, mental, and spiritual health. Mm. And with that said, he had given from Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, it establishes there what his plan was for mankind, what type of food we should have when we were made, created. It says there, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which there is fruit for of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for food or for meat. So in the very beginning, God established that the ideal for mankind, what he wanted, what he intended for us to eat was to be a vegetarian uh, diet. Mm -hmm. That was his plan. Now, as sin came into the world and it was not after, but after the flood, when change, things change, that God gave the opportunity for mankind to partake of eating meat, which was, again, specific. Only certain animals were to be eaten, not, you know, not every animal that moves or anything like that moves. You know, it was only specifically the clean animals that he established there. And that's before he even comes into the scene with Moses and the Levitical laws. Mm -hmm. So there is actually a clean, clean and unclean animals before he even declared them to the you know, Israelites. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we can know from, from this experience, you know, God now is intend, intending us to return to the original plan. And I believe that we can see in the scriptures that his intent is for us to be healthier to, for us to enjoy life, to have a strong body and a strong mind. And taking care of body means looking with a very honest approach at what is best for my health. And there is enough evidence now that uh, points that uh, you know, a plant-based diet is a much healthier approach. There are many documentaries made by you know, people that are just interested in, in finding what's best for human consumption that point to the fact that it's always healthier and better for humans to eat uh, a, a plant-based diet or a vegetarian diet. Uh, God has said that from the beginning, that was his intention, and I think that we need to, you know, listen to that voice. And of course, for prophecy does point to the fact that we should be abstaining today from eating animal products as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Leviticus 3.17 mm -hmm. gives some additional prescriptions about the, the animals that you can eat. It says there that you should not eat any fat. Oh, yes. And you should not eat anything with blood. So even though God allowed partaking of clean meats, still they could not eat the fat and they could not eat the blood. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is, there will not be a McDonald's in the New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or killing of any animal. Right, or no there, will be, there will be no death there. We will not be killing animals. We will not be eating bacon, mm -hmm. etc. Because God is going to return us to the original diet that mm -hmm. He established in the Garden of Eden, which you read in Genesis 129. Mm -hmm. The Bible also says that the animals will be vegetarians. Yeah. Can you imagine a vegetarian lion? Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says that the animals originally were Vegetarians, that's in Genesis 1 verse 30. Mm -hmm. The same is going to be true at the end of time when we go to heaven. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, is God going to change our tastes on the way to heaven? I do believe. No. We've yeah. learned to educate our tastes. Yeah. 
here on earth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God is not going to change our character. He's not going to change our tastes. He's going to change our body uh, into an immortal, incorruptible body, but He's not going to change our tastes. Mm -hmm. So it's best to follow God's original plan. Mm -hmm. You know, people are following plan B. Well, not Sabbath, but Sunday. Oh, uh, not two genders, but a hundred. You know, uh, not really marriage between a man and a woman, but, t but between a man and a man. And, uh, you know, not distinctive roles in, in marriage and in the church. You know, every, any, everybody has the same role. So man has turned upside down everything that God established. Mm -hmm. And God's plan is that we go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. His plan in the beginning is the best plan because it gives us joy, it gives us happiness, it makes us healthier, mm -hmm. and it makes us have a better mood because what we eat has a Excellent. lot to do with our mood. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, it's interesting. Um, man, because mankind settles for near perfect, we tend to think God is satisfied with near perfect. But we see in studying the Bible that God is very precise. He's precise about the day. He's precise about the diet. He's pre precise about the beginning and end of the Sabbath. He doesn't take near. He wants, he wants perfection in our following of him. Amen. Um, and, and we see that with, 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 with diet. Um, when we came out of the ark, as you mentioned, there were seven of one kind and two of another. Well, why were mm -hmm. there seven? Because you got to eat some, yeah. so you got to leave some. Well, the unclean ones, two, because you didn't need any more. You're not going to touch them, so leave mm -hmm. them alone. Uh, so God made that differentiation long before Sinai, uh, and, the, peop and mm -hmm. the people knew it. God wants the best for us, not nearly perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. he, wants, he wants you to do the best, to eat the best, live the best, clean, clean water, clean air, do the best you can, uh, give him your best, and then, of course, we can expect the best from him. And the reason why Ellen White recommends that we totally discard even clean meats is because circumstances have changed. Yeah, animals you know, back sick. in biblical times, they didn't have all these uh, hormones that they inject in the animals. The animal world was not as diseased as it is today. And so to what God allowed in the past, he says, it's not safe now. Mm -hmm. So God changes his counsel when circumstances changes, mm -hmm. change to be in harmony with himself, with his own will. You know, I say some to, sometimes I say to people, uh, you know, uh, does God say, well, you know, I allowed you to eat meat in the past. Doesn't matter if it's diseased and if it's full of hormones. I said you could eat it once and so you can eat it now. No. Mm -hmm. When circumstances change, God changes his counsel. And God has given counsel through the spirit of prophecy that meat is no longer safe. Not even clean meats mm -hmm. are safe anymore. Right. So they should be discarded in this period of history. Yes. And uh, to add that, Pastor, you know, there's also another aspect that we have to be mindful in the specifically about meat, you know, uh, animal processing for that. It, it's really a cruel experience, a cruel thing that's happening with animals too. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the industry for meat is not necessarily as it used to be before. It's, it's really abusing animals, like you said, injecting them with hormones so they can grow fast and they grow in ways that are really inhumane in many ways. And so... That's not the ideal of the Lord. And if we promote that type of lifestyle, we eat those things, we, you know, we are part of the problem. And I think that there's enough evidence that we are better by abstaining from meat even now as we are seeing around the world. You know, with Ellen others. White says, what was once safe isn't safe anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't partake of it. Correct. You know, and besides that, the environment is contaminated. Animals eat uh, GMO food, you know, and, uh, you know, it just isn't safe anymore. Anymore. And you can do a quick study. Look at the, the first ten patriarchs, antediluvian, and then the ones after the flood. Uh, the lifespan was cut very, very short. So even in the clean days, mm -hmm. when the animals were much cleaner than they are now, it was not good for 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 your health. Well, we've come to an end of a program. So very, very quickly, our time is fast slipping into eternity. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you for so much for contacting us. We ask God's richest blessing on you. And keep watching, keep writing, and we'll do the best we can to answer. God bless you. We'll be back soon.